Thank you, Cookie, for your support. Much appreciated. Hello, travelers. Boardman21 here, and today's build is the Multi-Shot Marksman. Now, this revolves around using Flurry. You're going to use it channeled, and you're going to have it proc Multi-Shot for you. Now, this is going to be an updated version of a previous channeled Multi-Shot Flurry that I've done in the past, a couple of patches ago. However, in this one, we're going to change some nodes around. We're going to update the gear since all of that changed in 8.1, and we're going to turn it into a bit more of a single target damage type. Where you can get right in the face of something and absolutely destroy it and the more damage you do the more that you leech which will increase your survivability that being said getting in melee range as a ranged character is usually never a good idea so this isn't going to be a top and arena pusher 100 to 200 waves is probably all you're going to get capped out with it and it does require a few specific things such as the affix of more damage per multi-shot arrow projectile that you have which comes on both idols and you can get it on the chest and helm as a rare affix and then of course we'll have one unique which is what I call the multi shot bow but it's called Dreckler's Compass and that one is a gambleable bow so you'll be able to gamble for it and get it if you have the gold or it'll fall as random RNG. Alright let's go ahead and get into the skills the interactions and just what makes this build pop. For skills I'm running decoy Shift, Smoke Bomb, Flurry with plus two levels, and Multi Shot. For Decoy, I have Decoy set up to give us some extra crit multi, it's going to give us some extra dodge, it's going to last as long as possible, it comes with an extra charge, and it's going to debuff the enemies just a little. We got two points in Efficient Construction, one point in Sonic Detonation, two points in Ear Shatter, one point in Warning Sound, four points in Embedded Spikes, one point in Backup Buddy, five points in Lasting Presence, three points into the shadows and one point in ambush which gives you more critical strike multiplier globally per dodge chance that you have so it's always a good idea to shift at least once while you have a decoy active to really boost your dodge up as high as possible so you get a lot more crit multi for four seconds after the decoy has disappeared for shift we have shift set up for some haste for some extra damage with some jade arrows and of course for more dodge so we got two points in shadow recuperation four points in jade quiver which gives you some jade arrows after you shift you get four of them this will give you extra critical strike chance as well as some poison chance but we're not too worried about that we also have two points in velocity three points in momentum four points in swift recovery one point in shadow slip which will make us invulnerable as we shift and four points in elusive so that we gain 120 flat dodge per point of dex that we have for only one second, but that's all you need to get your dodge percentage boosted well way up there so that your decoy will give you some extra critical strike multiplier. For Smoke Bomb, we got 1 point in Thick Smoke, 5 points in Lingering Fumes, 5 points in Shadow Hunter, so you're basically guaranteed to crit whenever you're inside of the Smoke Bomb, 1 point in Concealed and Carnage, and 3 points in Generosity for a bigger starting area, 1 point in Shrouded and Darkness, and 4 points in Rapid Concealment to try and get as many Dust Shrouds as possible, which will raise up your Glancing Below Chance and your Flat Dodge Rating. For Flurry, Flurry is going to be the skill that we're actually using while multi-shot. We don't actually ever manually do, so it won't be on our skill bar. It's procced through the channeling of Flurry. We have three points in Alacrity, one point in Boundless Blows so that you can now channel Flurry. Two points in Pavis for the physical and elemental resist. This is just to unlock the Fuselad so that you can multi-shot every fourth arrow that comes out of Flurry, which will raise the channeling cost by 15. Two points in Blood Revely, so you get some extra leech. One point in Second Wind, and two points in Sap Willpower, which gives you two mana every time you get a hit with Flurry, and because of your incredible attack speed, this will offset the channeling cost just a little bit enough so that you'll be able to stay in it for a much longer period of time and then because of that you want as fast attack speed as possible which attack speed normally does not affect channeling skills but it does for flurry so we have two points in relentless three points in adrenaline rush one point in inexhaustible and three points in strained reflexes for multi-shot, this is the skill that will actually be doing the most damage, and the way we have it set up here is what we call the shotgun effect, or point 
blink so that you can have all the projectiles from multi-shot hit the same target and so the closer you are the more likely that all of them will hit a target so you want to get right in the face of your high health mob targets. We have one point in sniping, three points in pining shots, two points in large quiver, one point in giant slayer, two points in true strikes, two points in quick draw, one point in back to back, two points in repeater bow which means that every fourth use of multi shot will now do a double attack so two multi shots that does work while you are using flurry it'll proc and every fourth time that it procs multi shot you get a double shot of it and then one point in hang loose as well as three points in point blank so not only are you getting in the face to have all of your projectiles hit the same target but you're also offsetting this 80% less damage multiplier with a 75% increased multiplier whenever you are close to the targets. For passives, I got 36 points in the Rogue base class, with 8 points in Swift Assassin, 8 points in Steady Hand, 1 point in Guile, 1 point in Evasion, 5 points in Agility, 5 points in Dodge and Parry, and 8 points in Critical Precision. I got 8 points in the Blade Dancer with all 8 points in Cloak of Shadows for that Glancing Blow chance as well as some Dexterity. And then for the Marksman, our Master Class, I have 68 points with 8 points in Draining Arrows, 5 points in Assassin's Quiver, 8 points in Concentration, 10 points in Woundmaker, 1 point in Meditation, 1 point in Reflection, 5 points in Heightened Senses, 10 points in Thief's Quiver, 1 point in Arrow Storm, 1 point in Covering Fire, 6 points in Sniper's Gambit, 2 points in Ethereal Arrows, 1 point in Barrage of Pain, 2 points in Reign of Arrows, 5 points in Perfect Aim, and 2 points in Master Archer. For items and idols, the idols that you want, you want the increased damage per arrow with multi-shot as well as increased armor shred effect. You can also get chance to slow on bow hit and you can also get increased bow critical strike chance. All of those are going to be good things that you can get for the suffix. But in the prefix slot, you want to get the increased damage per arrow with multi-shot in all of them. We have one unique, this is Drucker's Compass. This comes with a huge amount of bow physical damage on both the implicit and added. And then we have increased bow stun chance, which really works well with the point blink and the giant slayer node because you're doing 800% increased crit stun chance with that and you're getting all of those hits at once, which means you're very likely to stun a target. And then we have negative four bow attack mana cost, which does reduce the channeling cost of flurry, which is nice. And then you get four additional arrows with multi-shot, which means that all of those extra projectile damage increases that you have will really add up with the four extra projectiles. Then for crafted items, I'm just going to hover over all of these, but once again, if you go to the description, you can click on the written guide, and in that written guide will be a link to the build planner in which you can go over all these, you can click on them, you can change them, lower affixes, mess around with them, do whatever you need to do in order to see how you can make the build even better than it is here. For the character sheet, as you can see, we are not running very many resists. This was meant to be more of a ranged build until I decided to go with the Giant Slayer node and get right in the face of enemies. So what you're really depending upon is being able to be either in smoke bombs so that you have all of your glancing blow. You want to throw a decoy sometimes before you go right in, a, in the face of it. Or you want to be able to shift in. You'll have dodge for one second, so you'll have a very high amount of dodge. If I, if I use shift right now, you can see we jump up to 77% dodge for one second so a lot of what it is is you want to shift in really quick and start firing flurry to get your hits in and what that's going to do is even if you start taking damage when the dodge wears off you're going to have a high amount of leech at that point to leech back now once again obviously this is not going to be a super tanky build we do have our 100% critical strike avoidance. We do have quite a bit of endurance to reduce damage at a, at a decent amount of threshold. If you had capped resistances, this could be even better, and it is possible with the gear to rearrange some things and get it. However, with the setup here, you basically want to shift in, get all of that dodge, start firing flurry as soon as possible so that you can start leeching in case you do take any damage, or perhaps you even kill the enemy before you take that damage because you dodged everything in that first second. As you can see, we also have about a thousand life in this build. And then for the skill rotation and the setup, 
Cinder Strike, which we're not specced into, is our mana generator, or at least the skill we can use while we generate mana. Now, if you play this as kind of a kite build, meaning that you kind of run around, keep things away, you can regen mana quite well. In fact, I can sit here and channel for a little bit, and you can see how the mana is really not falling down that fast. I run around for a couple of seconds, and we already got all of it back, and we can keep doing that. You get in the face of a target, you can see how all those projectiles are hitting the same target, and you just have a massive amount of damage that you're doing there. But right here, because we're getting so many hits with so many projectiles, look how our channeling is almost staying even. It's just barely dropping. We can do this for quite a while. So you get right in the face of a boss and you can channel for quite a while. However, if you do happen to run out and you still want to get attacks, that is where Cinder Strike comes in. You can use it free of charge to still get in some leech and some damage. I like to put Smoke Bomb on Autocast, so I'll go ahead and do that. You're going to have a huge amount of crit while that's active because of the fact it gives you 10% more base. And then, like I said, you just shift, you get it in there. Whenever you know damage is coming or you have enemies that are really quick, you can always throw down a smoke or a decoy, shift, and get right back into the fight. Alright, that's going to be it from me. Hope you enjoyed the build guide. This, of course, isn't going to be the top pusher in the game. It may not even be a huge meta, but it is a different way to play with the marksman who is struggling at the moment for a lot of build variety and fun builds. And a multi-shot build is one of my favorite ones. I really wish that multi-shot actually had a zero mana costing skill because the AoE on it is something that a lot of people enjoy. And one of the only ways to get that for a lot of uptime right now happens to be through flurry like this. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys some gameplay, and as always, stay safe, travelers.